Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to crochet our river stone coat again. This is a nice warm and heavy jacket pattern. It comes with a belt. It's made from these beautiful granny square motifs and it has this beautiful ribbing collar as well as on the cuffs and also that bottom band has the beautiful ribbing as well. I will be working on the medium large size today in this tutorial, but if you go over to the blog or purchase the pattern, it will include all of your sizes from extra small to 5X. The yarn that I'm using for this pattern is Upcycle Alpaca Blend. It's a worsted weight yarn. It is a limited edition yarn, so make sure to grab it while you can if you're watching this video at a later date. I will have a list of substitutes on the blog as well as in the pattern. So you can purchase this from We Crochet or Knit Picks. I will have the link in the description box. The color I'm using is fruit punch, linen, and parchment. These types of cardigans made with motifs, it's really a mix and match sort of puzzle. You can sort of puzzle piece your way to the cardigan style that you want, the fit. You can change up your length. You can change up your sleeve length. Really just arrange your squares into the size that you want. So the square that we're working with is four inches. So you have to keep that in mind whenever making alterations. If you're changing up your to a different yarn, you wanna go for this four inch square. If your square comes out a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, that is going to change the overall size of your cardigan. So just a simple half an inch is going to make a big difference when you have maybe 10 squares that you need around your entire body. Plus when you add ribbing, you're going to have um, more inches added, added as well. So it's a good idea to make a square with whatever yarn you're using and try to meet this four inch mark. So change your hook size, play with your hook size, play with your yarn to get the four inches. I'll be using the dots hook set for this pattern. You can purchase these also from We Crochet. You can get a set and your sizes range from a two all the way to a six. They have a nice comfort grip. And I find that these do crochet up a little bit smaller than I typically will be using my furls streamline hooks. And when I've tested out my gauge with these hooks in comparison, I find they're about a half a hook size smaller. So if you're using those hooks and you're not meeting gauge, you may need to size down. So I'll be using a 4.5 to make my squares and then I'll end up using a four for the ribbing. So just a little housekeeping before we get started, you're going to find all of the links in the description box below, you're gonna find yarn amounts, you're gonna find the size information, the yarn information, everything you need will be down in that description box. Also, you can slow down videos on YouTube or speed them up, really adjust the speed to your preference. So there is a gear icon below this video, click on that, which is the settings, and you can adjust the speed. This is an intermediate level pattern. This video is not intended to teach you how to crochet. You need to know how to crochet a puff stitch and you need to know your basic stitches and techniques to crochet this pattern. If you have never read a crochet pattern, it is helpful to follow along with the written pattern. So it will help teach you how to read a written pattern and walk you through each of the steps of the pattern. So I do suggest following along either on the blog or with the printable PDF pattern. You can find the pattern in my Etsy shop or my Ravelry shop, or you can currently purchase as part of a collection with my designer friends, Brianna and Hannah of Brianna K Designs and Han Jan Crochet. If you want more details on that collection and the crochet along we'll be hosting, again, just check the description box below and you will find all of the details for that. So let's get started. So we have our 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. We're gonna be starting out with a magic ring. So I'm going to take my yarn, 
wrap it around my index finger three times. I'm going to take my hook, sliding it through all three loops. Take your first loop, pull it through, and chain one. Now we're going to work six puff stitches in the ring. So we're going to yarn over, go through the ring, pulling up a loop, yarn over, go back down, pulling up another loop, yarn over, Okay, so we want to have done that four times. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through, chain one. So we've completed our first puff with a chain one, and now we're going to do five more of these. I'm not going to work through them all so slowly, but let's do it slow again one more time. So yarn over. Pull up a loop one, yarn over, pull up a loop two, yarn over, pull up a loop three, yarn over, pull up a loop four. Again, you should have nine loops on the hook. Count them out to make sure. I know in some of my other patterns, if the odd time you've had to only do three to make your yarn um, stretch a little farther, a three isn't going to make a huge difference. But if you want all your puffs the same, make sure to do them going through the four times. So I'm going to complete now all six of my puffs with chain ones. Okay, so I have all six. I've chained one. Now I'm going to move my work out of my way just so I can see those inner loops. I'm going to take my tail, pull. Just one loop's going to pull in. The loop that's pulling in, I'm going to take it, grab it, and it's going to pull that other loop in tight. Then I'm just going to take my tail, giving it a tug. Now I'm going to slip stitch in the top of the first puff stitch to join. And then I'm going to slip stitch over to, or slip stitch into the chain one space, okay? Now I'm going to chain one. Now in every chain one space around, we'll be working now two puff stitches. So we're going from six up to 12. It's always good to give a tug when you're going through and pulling up those loops. Just, it is a little bit tricky to get the hang of the puff stitch, but if you give a tug each time you're going through, I automatically do that. It's gonna be easier to pull through those loops on your hook. Chain one, one, two, three, four. I always just count as I'm going through to make sure I get those four and chain one. So that's in the first chain one space. And we're going to do that in each chain one space around. Okay, so let's just go through the next one together. There's one, two, three, four, chain one, one, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm gonna repeat this around. I'll meet you up at the end. Okay, so now I prefer not to weave in any tail. So I'm using the thumb join so that I don't have all those extra tails to weave in. So I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna measure roughly. I'm thinking about an inch. I'm just gonna cut about an inch. Okay, just about an inch and I'm going to join in my next color which is the linen and I'm going to do my thumb join so I'm gonna take the yarn move my hook out of there I'm gonna bring in my new color beside my thumb. I have some videos on this. 
and this can be tricky to get the hang of. So if you have another method that you want to use for this, that is absolutely fine. Use whatever and make sure to test out the yarn you're working with. I know this yarn is going to hold really well, but depending on what you're using, you may want to change the method. If it's a silky yarn, you don't want the knot coming undone. So I'm going to go around my thumb and the tails two times. Then the third time I'm going to take my tail and I'm wrapping it between my thumb now and the tails. Then I'm going to take my tails, tucking them in under this strand of yarn that I've wrapped. Okay, so I'm going to tuck them and then I'm going to pinch with my fingers. So make sure you're pinching with your fingers and pull. And sometimes it will slip through a couple times. You can always trim if the tail is a little bit fluffy. You can always wet the knot a little bit too, just to make sure that it's going to be nice and tight. Okay, so the point is, is that you do that quickly because if it takes you too long you might as well just weave in those tails right so you want it to be quick now if your puff has started to pull back no worries you can just complete that puff again we're going to chain one now we're going to slip stitch over sometimes you can play around with how much you're slip stitching to get that knot in the right place Okay, so I've maybe, I've slip stitched twice because I want to try to get that knot right close. So this one I could have probably had a little bit less a tail. I just play around with it. I want to try to keep that knot invisible at the back so I'm not seeing it. Then I'm going to chain one because I want to be pulling through the new color. So again, you can just play around with your slip stitches. Maybe you only can slip stitch once because you're to the knot. Really just whatever, play with it. Then we're going to start into our next puff stitch round. Chain one, we're just doing one in the first chain one space. And now with our increase pattern, we'll be doing two in the next because each round will go up by six. Okay, so our pattern is one and then two, one and then two, one and then two around. Okay, so I'm just going to complete this now all the way around. So we had 12 the last round, so this round will be going up to 18. Okay, so once we're all the way around, we're going to slip stitch in that first puff to join, and we're going to slip stitch over to the or into the chain one space and chain one and now the repeat pattern will be one one and then two one one and then two so we'll work one two and then two in the next Okay, so now we're going up by another six stitches. So we're going to be up to 24. And this is another tip. If you're alter, alternate, um, altering rows at all, some people have thought, well, maybe I'll just do one less row of my gauges off or do another row. You have to have a multiple of four for your square to work out. 
So 24 stitches will divide by four, so we're perfect for our corners. So that's something to keep in mind if you're playing around with this pattern. You need to have a multiple of four or it's going to mess you up. Okay, so I've completed this round, ending with two. I now have 24 puffs and I'm going to change color. So I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to bring in the final color, which is the fruit punch. So I'm going to do another thumb join. Again, if you want to weave in those tails, that's okay, or use your preferred method for knotting. Oops, and I pulled that puff back again, but again, that's okay. One. Okay, and this time, when I redid that puff, I'm pretty close, but that's okay, because I'm just going to, if that happens and you're that close, first of all, you can redo your puff and make it a little tighter, or let's just slip stitch right over to the chain one because I wanna be pulling up with that color. And that's really okay. You have some play with those slip stitches, so don't worry too much about that. So now we're on to the round that's gonna square everything up like this. And this is really easy to do because we have a nice uh, divisible number by four. So we're gonna start with a chain three that's going to count as our first double crochet. Then we'll work two doubles, chain one, and then three doubles. So that is a corner. And now in the next chain one space, we're going to work two doubles. We're going to work two half doubles in the next chain one space, two singles in the next chain one space, two half doubles in the next, and then two doubles in the next. Okay, so we've worked over six chain one spaces, so that will be one of our quarters so we're to our next corner and we'll work three doubles. Chain one and three doubles. Okay, so we've made this corner this corner and now we need to repeat the sequence here. So that will be two doubles, two half doubles, two singles, two half doubles, and two doubles. And then this is really gonna help even out our square. And I'm just going to repeat now my next corner and go around meeting you on the other side. Okay, so our last space is going to be right here. And we're finishing with two doubles. And we can slip stitch into our starting double to join. You could also do a seamless join finish if you want as well. That's a good option and I'll just show you quickly how to do that. So we can pull back. You just finish off that double again. 
So to do a seamless, you're just going to fasten it off. You're not going to join. You're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to skip over the chain. You're going to go under the two loops of the first double. You're gonna come back and you're gonna go through the back loop only of your last stitch. Okay, and that's gonna give it a nice finish and make it also a little bit easier when you're seaming this up later. So for the medium large size, we'll need to make a total of 111 squares. They're going to need to be blocked and I'm gonna show you here um, one of the pegboard blocking sets you can get. You can also block these on mats, whatever you, you want. With these being a four inch, this works out really good with this blocking pegboard that I have here. You're just sticking these into the holes. And this, I can perfectly fit four on here for blocking. So you can just either, you can take your squares, you can wet them so you can submerge them into some lukewarm water with some of your wool wash can let those soak, pull them out, sort of use a towel, we'll rinse them, rinse them before you take them out of the water, and then you can squeeze out as much water as possible, wrap them in a towel, and then you can just put them out. You can use even some more of the, the set comes with a bunch of these. So if you need to more in here to square them off you can do that as well really acting just like pins or you can also spray just dampen them and fit them on the board as well or you can use um, some blocking mats and pins and you can get ones with the lines on them so they're really easy to measure out as well so you want to do these possibly as you go you can fit more on here i would leave them not squished right together if you're stacking just so that they dry better but if you do a bunch and block as you go it's not going to be so overwhelming at the end to have to block all of them but it's really whatever your preference is you can block as you go or block all at the end. This will only be able to fit so many. So if this is all you have for blocking, you may want to space it out. So once you've blocked them your preferred way, whether it's on mats or on these, these pegboards, just make sure that they're fully dry before removing them. And really, they come out really nice. So you can see the difference between this one and this one. It's just going to square it off. It's going to make seaming this all together so much better. So once you have all of your squares made and you've blocked all of your squares, we're going to start seaming it together. These really nice um, tapestry needles from Knit Picks that I've received from We Crochet. So they're sister companies. So I'll have a link for them in the description box. And you can use your preferred seaming method. So if you would rather a different method for seaming together your squares, go ahead with that. I have used just a simple whip stitch and my mom was gonna help me out with that to sew all of these squares together. My other granny square cardigan I made, I did the, the flat slip stitch which was a beautiful stitch, but definitely a little bit more time consuming, a little bit more intermediate level. So if you just want a simple way or look up different ways of seaming and pick your preferred method. So I'm gonna show you a really simple way. And what you wanna do is go to your chart. So I'm gonna zoom in on the medium large because that's the size we're making. So as you can see, we have some really long strips here that need to be seamed. So what I always suggest is taking your big sections and working on them. So I would seam together these two and just kind of keep going, stitching all of those together and then add in this strip, seam it here. 
but really however you want. You could do the sleeves separately and then join them. Here are the gussets, so you're just going to have little strips to seam. It's a little bit of work, but it is something you can do while you're watching TV at night. So you want to take a look at your charts. We have all the sizes that you'll be working on. So the gusset gets seamed here, and then you basically are then seaming to this side to seam the side of your cardigan together. So I'm going to show you the technique, the whip stitch technique that I've used. And then, like I say, you can use this method or whatever method you'd like. So I'm going to get my yarn on my hook here and I want right sides facing. So I can see that this is my right side. It has the nice clean edge. If you look at it this way, you're not going to see that stitch the same. So this is the side you want. We want to put them together. like this and I'm going to go through that chain one space to start with. I'm just going to go through twice just to make sure that's secure. Now you can go through the full stitch but what I do find looks a little bit nicer if you're going to the outside loops on each side. So if you look at your stitch you're going to have your little loops that are going to go down to the inside and then this would be sort of the front loop and then this would be the back loop but the loops that are to the outside. We're going to just go through them. Okay. And the reason I'm going to get you to do that is so you get the little ridges from the other loop of the stitch. You're just going to work that all the way. It's good to have good lighting so you can see them, especially if you're working with the dark. And then as you can see, you're leaving this this loop here and this loop here and then you get that nice effect which I think it makes it look really nice and if you want a nice polished finished look and this is a really easy way and you want when you're looking at how much yarn to have I would go with about three times the length that your going to seam and that's going to give you more than enough. You might be okay with two, two and a half, but better to have a little bit extra. So if you're measuring out that you're going to seam up together, let's just say a patch of like six squares, then you would want to measure that out um, about three times that length. And then you can keep going without stopping. So when you get to your corner here, you're going to seam into your, you're going to stitch into the next corner of your next squares. Okay, so I'm coming up to the next corner. Okay. Sometimes you just have to take a look underneath to make sure you're going through the right spot. Okay. And there you go. So that's how it's going to look when you get that all seamed up. And like I say, Try to have some good lighting, especially if you're working with a darker color like this, because you definitely want to be able to see the loop that you're grabbing with your needle. And then what I would do, I don't have any more of my other squares left, but I have some of these squares. So I'm just going to take them and go like this. So they have the right sides facing. that tail out of the way. And what I'm going to do is through the chain one spaces, I'm going to go through twice and that's just going to secure it so that it's not loosening up when we go across to the next two. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just go through there twice. Okay. To make sure that 
they're lined up and then we're going to do the same thing we're just going to keep going through the outside loops and continue okay so then that's going to join it together and then when you come the other way you're going to again have them right sides together and you're going to do the same method you're just going to go all the way across making sure to get in the chain one corners and across making sure your corners are secure and just keep going okay so it's a little bit of a project to get all of the seaming done but it does actually work up fairly quickly when you're just using your yarn needle Okay, so I'm so excited to show you the progress on the cardigan. So my mom, she doesn't crochet, but she does sew. And she went ahead and whip stitched all of these squares together for me. So I'm so excited that she did that. So here is our gusset that's all stitched together. Mom stitched that together for me too. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to have to stitch here up the sleeve okay and I'm gonna have it I'm gonna do it right sides facing and then all the way down this side okay so we have the right sides facing we're gonna whip stitch this all the way super easy what you're gonna do, you're gonna take one big long piece of yarn and we wanna do it three times, three times the length. So I think it might be easier just to take my gusset length. I'm gonna measure out a yarn piece. Now you could also go just to the underarm and then join on a new piece. That would work too if you don't want to work with this really, really long piece of yarn. You could do that too. Okay, so I have my long piece of yarn. And I'm going to find again, so I have my right sides facing right now. So here's right side it is really hard to tell so make sure you you keep track of what side is what so i'm maybe going to start with my sleeve because it's a bit smaller i get my yarn needle and we're just going to start I really want to get this one done for you just because this could be the most confusing part. So I just want to make sure you're on track with it. Always like to go through that first one two times to get it knotted and just make sure that you're doing it even as you go going through each stitch. Like I say, it's gonna be a bit of a pain with this big long tail, but I would rather do this than join on more yarn. I like long pieces. Sorry, I'm getting off camera. But you get the idea we're just and make sure you're getting you're going across it even so I'm gonna keep working up this one and then I'll show you how you get it to the other side because the other side of the gusset is going to be attaching this side and the front panel so then it's all seamed together Okay, so now let's find our sleeve. So we know the right sides are facing now together. So we're just matching up now the sleeve and the sides. 
And if your pattern doesn't have a gusset, then all you're doing is taking your sleeve, folding it in half, basically doing the same thing. You're gonna seam down the sleeve and the side, but with the gusset, we have a few extra steps. So let's start, we can start at the sleeve, that's fine. I'm just going to get my yarn and my needle and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna join down at the corners. And I do like to always go through that first to knot it. You can even pull through and, and give it a knot if you want and a tail long enough for weaving. Now, what I found looks the best is if you're just going through one loop on each side. Okay, so just like this. And if you've pulled off a nice long tail, again, like I have, you won't have to join on again. You can just keep going. So we'll go up the sleeve. There's four squares for the sleeve. And then how many did we have for the body? I can't remember. So there's four. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 10 all together. So you're just gonna keep seaming all the way down, fasten off, and then weave in the tails. And then the next thing we're gonna move on to will be the all of the ribbing to finish, finish it off. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing that off camera. Okay, so once you have the entire cardigan seamed up, I want you to have your right side facing. Put a slip knot on the hook and join in to your chain one corner. Then you're just going to slip stitch. You're just going to slip stitch all the way across the bottom. So you're going across the fronts and the back all in one piece and you're going to end with a slip stitch in that chain one corner. Now we're so I'm gonna change to my smaller hook. I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna work single crochets in the back loop of each stitch across. Okay. So you should have this ridge here and you're gonna single crochet all the way across. So now once you've worked all the way across, we're gonna do a join as you go ribbed band. So I'm gonna begin with a chain of 15. And you can adjust this if you want you don't have to go this wide or you could go even wider really this that is your preference so in the second chain from the hook i'm going to work single crochets move some stuff here so we'll work across the chain so that we have 14 single crochets So now you'll want to turn your work, 
So we're coming back to the right side. I've got a lot of sweater here to move. Okay. So we're going to skip the first stitch and we'll slip stitch into the next two. And you'll turn, put your work to the back and we're going to single crochet through the back loops only. Working all the way across. Okay, and then we'll chain one and turn. Work single crochets through the back loop only of each stitch. Okay, and then we'll slip stitch in the next two stitches along that base row, turn, and we're just going to keep working back and forth in rows now. So you'll have the same number of rows worked across as you have stitches. Okay, so you just wanna evenly work across, just continue working this band back and forth in rows. So we're slip stitching, or sorry, single crocheting through the back loops only. And slip stitching to that base row, and we're gonna work that all the way across. Okay, so to work the cuff, we're going to join on, and let's go, I'm gonna put a slip knot on the hook. And I'm just going to join, this is the um, gusset, I'm just going to join into it. Okay, and I'm going to slip stitch in every stitch around. So when you work across a square, you're working 16, and then we're gonna do one in the join as well. And that will just keep us consistent all the way around. Okay, and then we'll slip stitch in our starting slip stitch to join. I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna work single crochets. I'm gonna switch over to my smaller hook single crochets into the back loop. Okay, so you should have 68 stitches around and now we're going to chain one and we'll skip every other stitch. So we'll single crochet, skip a stitch, single crochet, skip a stitch, single crochet. Okay, so we're gonna reduce down to 32 stitches. Okay, so I've worked around a total of 34. I maybe said on the last clip 32, I can't remember. If I did, my math was off. So you should have 34, half of 68. And I'm going to slip stitch to join. And then to do the cuff, we're going to do the join as you go ribbing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm only going to do it 10 stitches rather than 14, so a little bit less. So 
one and so we're single crocheting in the second chain from the hook so this is the same as the band it just has four less stitches so we're working single crochets down our chain so that we have a total of 10 And I'm going to skip that first stitch and slip stitch into the next two. Then we'll turn and skip the two slip stitches working single crochets in the back loops. So we'll want to work around a total of 34 rows. Okay, so 34 rows, the same number that we have of stitches. Chain one and turn. Work back down, and you're gonna do this for the other sleeve as well. Once you get this join as you go ribbing down pat, it's really easy to whip through it. So you're just working that around. You'll work it for both sleeves. We've worked it for the band and you'll also be working it for the collar. Okay, so I'm gonna finish working that up off camera. So now, and so for the collar, we're working it just like we did the band. So we're going to slip stitch in every stitch all the way around. So you're, you have 16, per square plus one in between each of the squares. That will help keep you on track with your stitch count. So you're gonna work that and then you're going to do your join as you go ribbing. So if you keep it at the 10 stitches, you'll have two inches, which that's going to give you equal fronts to your back. If you go bigger, you're gonna get a little bit of overlapping. So if you wanna go with the 14 stitches, it'll give you a little bit thicker ribbing that may overlap slightly. But because of typically our front chest area is larger than our back, it's okay to go a little over in the front. So if you wanna go with the thicker ribbing, that's fine. If you wanna do an even thinner ribbing, that's fine. That's where you can kind of customize the pattern to your liking but I'm not going to work through that again because it's just a repeat of what I'm already showing you, but just working all the way around the collar. Okay, so here's the finished collar and we're just about finished. One more thing that you can add, of course this is optional, is a belt. So I have just done the simple single crochet in the back loop only belt and I have done it 12 stitches. So I'll show you how to work this up and you can really customize the length that you want but for the size that I'm working on I did 220 rows. I also added a simple belt loop just to hold the belt when it's on. Now because my size has the gusset I went back three squares so if you're working on the small, you'd go back two squares and you would hit your seam. But this is actually our center right here, but I wanted to make sure that it was on a seam. So I went three. So you can kind of play around. You can add it where you're happy. And it's really simple to do this. So what you wanna do is leave a long tail. You're gonna put a slip knot on your hook. We're gonna be working with the tail as well as the working yarn, so that's why you want it long. You can join in to wherever you like. So how many squares did I go up? Let me just count that for you. One, two, three, four. I've gone up four, but what I did is I tried it on and kind of judge where your waist is going to hit, and then you can join it to that area. So I'm going to just work through 
a slip stitch here just to get joined. Then what you're going to do is take your working or your tail and wrap it over your hook. Then you're going to yarn over with your working yarn and pull through. Okay, so we're going over with the tail, yarning over and pulling through. And all this is gonna do is just make like an eye cord, which will be thicker than a chain. And it's really easy and it just thickens it up. Makes a nice, so you're gonna want to do 12 of these at least. I'm trying to think how many I did now. Let me give that a count. You're gonna wanna make sure that your belt can go through. So just make it long enough. Okay, so you just wanna keep going. Okay, and then what you can do is take your tails. You're gonna wanna fasten this off. Take your tails. I would put your tails so that you weave them through once one side of our seam and then one tail on the other side and then you can knot to the inside of the cardigan and either just trim your tails or weave them in. So I'm going to pull this off because I've already done my loops but I wanted to show you how simple that is just to add the little belt loop on. So now to make your belt put a slip knot on your hook and I'm going to chain out 13. Okay, and then we'll work a single crochet, the second chain from the hook, and in each chain across. Now you can alter the width of your belt really however you want it. But I think 12 stitches gives it a nice width. It's a little over the two inch mark. So you're looking at about two and a quarter to two and a half inches. Okay, so once you've worked all the way, we're going to chain one and turn, and then you're going to work single crochets through the back loops only. Okay, so what you're going to do is, as you can see, the first two rows make a ridge and that makes it easy to count as you go. You're gonna want 220. So when you're counting, as you can see these ridges, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, it's really easy to count them. So about 220 or just measure to the length that you're happy with. So, I'm wearing the medium large and this is the length that I've done mine. So if you're working on a bigger size, you may wanna do it longer unless you don't want as much hanging and then that's fine too. You just won't use as much yarn. So really as long as you can tie it around your waist and it is going to stretch out as well. So it will actually be a bit longer with the stretch. So once your belt is complete, you can just put it through your loops, give it a tie and it will just help to keep your jacket nice and secure in the cooler weather. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so you stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Just a reminder to check the description box below for all of the links and details about the pattern. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.